Thank you, Madam Speaker. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. It is good that that was written in the American Constitution. That is not the tyranny of old white men, but something which helped and aided the civil rights movement throughout the 20th century. Law is not separate from morality. Law decides the moral question. We think, therefore, that there can be morally illegitimate laws. We think that on our side, we stop those going through. Laws are not, do not gain all their legitimacy from direct democracy and the tyranny of the majority. Uh, majority. Um, right. Three points today. First of all, where well, this is democratic. Secondly, where well, this protects popular principles. Um, thirdly, political change. For that, however, one big bit of rebuttal. So we get this idea that there is no moral truth. We say, well, maybe, that's not what we claim, right? What we said was that constitutions were substantially better than the tyranny of the majority who are open to like, some large conflict interested to swing referenda or emotive issues. Look, for example, at anti terror legislation after 9 11. Vast numbers of things went terribly wrong when George Bush and Tony Blair over stand and go, look, but we need to do this, right? Huge principles were pushed aside. It was only because of the Supreme Court that, that was kept in check. It was only because of the House of Lords uh, and the House of Lords that we managed to ma maintain a, a detention without um, well, that, well, below 30 days. These are the things that we are proud of within the Supreme Court. We get no response from animal stuff, right, about when people do want to do really bad things. Like when 80% of people in the 1980s wanted to quarantine uh, uh, HIV AIDS sufferers in rural bits of Scotland. We think that's a terrible thing, and we're glad that we aren't allowed to do it. Where is this idea coming from? The moral truth can't come from individuals, but it's always just what the majority believed. We said there are loads and loads of examples, but that's simply not the case. Right there. Um, but finally, he says, oh, there are constitutions in Sri Lanka which aren't as good as they could be. We are quite willing to say that constitutions in Sri Lanka should be better. We say that it's also good at the point at which you actually have those principles enshrined in law saying all people are created equal. You then actually provide a narrative for embattled minorities to claim we have a constitutional right to something. You do half the work for them. They are suddenly able to say at the point at which you consider me human, I deserve these rights. But half the argument is that the formal constitution is much, much better for a minority to have that constitutional claim and have none at all. First point, why is this democratic? So again, we keep getting this idea out of open government that democracy is just simply as what we can poll. Well, as long as 80% of people want something, or 66% of people want something, then brilliant, it's moral. We say no, because democracy is much, much more than just voting. If you, you have no access to liberty, if you have no access to equality, what is the point in that vote in the first place? If you can't actually get to the polling station or you have to put your hand up in front of someone who terrifies you to declare your vote, that's no real vote at all. If you can't actually declare the things that you want to declare in political discourse, there's no actual self-rule there at all, right? Democracy is more than a vote, but rather the principles of self-rule which require equal access to that self-rule. When you shut people down from anti-terror legislation and say, no, you cannot say this, or no, you cannot preach these things, that means that you have much less power, right? These people, uh, democracy, therefore, isn't just voting. At the point at which voting starts to infringe upon those principles of democracy, the reason we have voting in the first place, we say that voting actually starts to become illegitimate. For example, if we were to elect a dictator, which would then removed all of democracy, we would say that that vote was probably an illegitimate use of democracy, given it would be offending the principle it's trying to protect in the first place. We say that principles of democracy, therefore, are so much, much more important than simply the like, arbitrary will of the people. But why does it protect popular principles? Adam comes to facts, and here they are. So, the UN Declaration of Human Rights was presented to 51 member states of the UN. 43 of those ratified it. South Africa didn't because they were being racist. Saudi Arabia didn't because they didn't want people to have a religion. The USSR, the Belarusian SSR, the Ukrainian SSR, the Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia didn't ratify it because well, there weren't enough rights on economic and social rights. The international governments have the highest adoption of anything put forward by the UN. On average, they get 172 signatories, it's over 88%. There is no principle more loved than the idea of human rights anywhere. Almost every country will not find a government that says we do not like human rights. But if you don't, it's very hard to find one who will not make that proclamation. The constitutions don't tend to say we will always oppress this particular group. Constitutions don't tend to say we will always be really, really bad people. Well, because people yeah. don't actually genuinely believe they are immoral, like they usually believe they're on the right side of the world. Secondly, also people don't want to have the international condemnation they know that would get. This 
brings, brings me to my point of uh, my question, point of rebuttal. Right? So as soon as you give that constitutional key to someone and say, look, we have it written in the founding documents of this entire country, I'll take it a moment, you will allow, you'll allow one much, much easier path to genuine equality. Isn't it all the UN Declaration is your example, when that declaration is absolutely no strike down power to any court on the planet. But it also feels like good to have it in general. I, I, I'd, probably be like, I'd probably be happy with like more courts uh, from the able to support the UN Declaration, but it's very good in terms of like the prescriptive thing, which is able to also encourage people to uh, uh, apply political pressure. The point wasn't that the UN Declaration has strike down power, the point was that people like human rights, it's a lie when every government say people don't like human rights, you're being colonialist. Just not true. Okay, no, thank you. Right, so what we say, right, is that however, despite these principles, people can be terrible. People can be shitty. People can try and like avoid the principle or, or don't realise that they're offending the principles which they thought were so incredibly important. When you have these offensive situations, when you have anti-terror legislation, people need to be told that hang on, this might seem sensible now, but look at the principles which you claim were so important to you. This is what the Supreme Courts can do. Right then, political changes. How do we make positive changes away from the human centre? You notice democracies are perfect like arbitration machines. They are not actually always even the will of the people. Right? Referenda can be thrown, for example, by huge corporate interests. Look at Proposition 8 in California. Vast amounts of money is able to be thrown into campaigns and then to push people away. This is why actually like, we have like, laws on funding, right? Because that actually protects the basic principles of democracy that we want to protect, which ties into that first point about why like, democracy is more than simply just voting. What we do here is we actually allow people to make decisions that democracy wouldn't allow them to do. Right, like Brown v. Board of Education was never to be pushed through by a Missouri governor who relied on an incredibly large racist majority to keep him in power. It was never to be pushed through by governors who were funded by explicitly racist and segregation, segregationist organisations because he was never going to go back in power. It was the bravery of judges to say, no, this is immoral, no, this is in our constitution that was so incredibly important. We protect a genuine view of democracy, Madam Speaker, not offensive to radical majorities. We protect minorities and we'll sacrifice.